So the way I'm understanding your kind of intimate use with the product is it's it's almost like data as a service. Um, so at, a, at a, I guess, a high level, and then you can get as granular as you want. Yeah. The way you're using Foundry and the way you're using Palantir as a service to optimize or kind of mobilize your data in order to make you more productive. What is the use case of that? What is the value proposition of that? Can you speak to this concept of this word ontology we keep hearing? Can you give us kind mm -hmm. of a five, seven minute diatribe on how using data as a service within Foundry in particular actually increases the revenue for the company you work at and may decrease the cost, increase the efficiency, et cetera? I think the one thing that I... The thing that I like to think of Foundry as most, which I think is going to get me scolded by somebody that's actually very technical and knows how to use it, is like, it's almost like when you're entering something, everything's interconnected, right? So when you use Excel, Excel doesn't always talk to PowerPoint uh, or Excel doesn't always talk to Word or anything like that. The, the beauty of a Foundry uh, is you have all those things that are interconnected. So I can create reports, uh, you know, and people are like, oh, Power BI does that and stuff of the like. It's like, I get it. Um, but you have reports and things of the like that you can create uh, that have visualizations that you can send out to a multitude of different people that you can put a different allowance on in, in, in some certain cases, depending on security. And I think that that's just brilliant, right? You have all this now things that communicate very well with each other that you know, it's almost seamless. It's almost like everything is loaded to one centralized database that communicates with each other versus if you have a bunch of people on Excel, they could upload it to SharePoint, but that SharePoint's not going to be immediately accessing the Word document or the, the PowerPoint presentation and, and what have you. So it, it brings that to the next step of being able to integrate all those different minor applications all in one. And then two, the ontology piece is very important because even if you are using an Excel, um, or something that is trying to categorize data. The ontology piece is taking specific numbers and trying to relate it back to certain different things. Like you have a, a very small, let's just say, stream of data. And it's like, well, that data might not necessarily be in a great relationship with that data. So it's all just about categorization. And so, for example, if you have a facility name, we have, say, 30, 40 big assets within our organization. It's like if you were to look at, you know, assets within the organization, you'd say these 40 different names. Well, it's like there's a subset of data underneath all those 40 names. But if you were just in Excel, you couldn't really categorize things very well in terms of like a model library or being able to understand what data and how it correlates, what's the parent, what's the son, what's what's the grandfather of all these different categories of data. And then underneath that, it's like, well, we operate in regions, right? I work in the Gulf of Mexico. Some people might work in the UK. Some people might work in the Southeast Asian markets. And so having that ability to subset all this data and have it consistent across an entire organization, it's not just somebody in, say, the Gulf of Mexico opening up a Microsoft Excel and saying, okay, here's all the different categories. It's like, nope, now it's actually uploaded to one central database that the entire company has the ability to use. And then it can, you know, that might not seem so useful. Um, there, there are things that then, uh, like Fusion is a really good application within Foundry that basically says, I only want to focus on these particular things. And so you have this big spreadsheet worth of data that's probably collecting millions of data points a day, but I only want to focus on these two things. And so while that other spreadsheet is working on in the background, Fusion will only allow you to focus on and, and kind of categorize. It's like a big pivot table, but it allows you to, if anybody's used pivot tables in Excel, they're great. But at the same time, they kind of break every time you add new data to the data set. And so Fusion is like this version that won't break, right? It's always constantly being updated. And so you're focusing on specifically the things that you want, uh, which is beautiful. Um, and then there's the aspect of, adding an additional layer, which is, as I've kind of alluded to, you've already had all these model libraries, categorization, this ontology being built from day one as of six years ago. Now you're getting to the point where, you know, you're probably sitting there and it's like, why does this ontology really matter? And it's like, well, then you start to add in the large language models and, and things like that on top with the AI, where it's like, oh shit, now you could put up the guide rails to say, 
what is our best operating asset? How does it work? Why is it most efficient? And, and truly start to use AI to the purpose that would be something that, I don't know, it, it, it's still very much in its infancy, but there's see a lot of different applications of, of why it might be useful. Say a piece of equipment goes down on one of our assets in the Gulf of Mexico, we could say, well, you know, it might have a long lead of 24 to 36 months. We have a lot of activity ramping up across the industry right now because oil prices last year hit $140 a barrel. And so a good example of this is now a lot of people are starting to invest again, billions of dollars, and, and lead times are getting longer for trees and, and pipe and sourcing for those things can take years, if not, you know, two, three years. And so it's like, do we have any excess, say a valve breaks or a, a gauge breaks or a pump breaks? You could look and say, do we have any from an AI perspective, AIP perspective, do we have any of this additional part on any of our other assets before we have to go to the market and wait two years, three years? And that could be sourced from, you know, another Gulf of Mexico entity by, you know, maybe a, a week or two, depending on, you know, how easily it can be moved, you know, and, and that could have huge pieces instead of calling a bunch of different people being like can you look this up That's what i was going to say if you didn't have aip what would you have to do to get that answer i'm sure you'd have to call and, and like call a regional president or, or local president like the our our asset manager might have to call somebody in the uk and the uk is like okay let me talk to my engineers and and so it's like if you have everything from day one categorized appropriately then you could say let's look up this particular part uh and, and see if we have any excess or spares because uh, there's certain things that break all the time and we always have spares. Um, and there's certain things that are rare that, you know, break. So it's if you have a, a categorization and, and like a, a true library of all these things that are on your facilities, whether it's a digital twin aspect of things or whether it's just a simple, ex like um, not Excel workbook, but just a, a foundry workbook that has all these things categorized that you can search for. And it's all connected to one simple database. It just makes things a lot easier from being able to go from one region to the next. Uh, and also it standardizes things. We used to have to um, go from one region to the next. We were using different softwares. And I, I remember moving from Trinidad, or sorry, from Gulf of Mexico to Trinidad for a year when I was working there. And I was like, oh, you guys don't have these like, simple like it, it was still new in the company right so it wasn't like we'd been around for five palantir had been around for five years in the organization but it was like okay i know exactly what i need to do to be able to build a model of our well bore in foundry and quiver to be able to monitor all these things and and then every day i would send a report to the boss who was probably curious about what rate production was for the for the previous day and you can see what, would, what did we actually sell versus what the meter said we sold? So you could see, you know, if the meters were off by 5%, 10% or what have you, because that happens as well. And so it, it allowed them to be able to keep a monitor on things. So you'd wake up 8 a.m. every morning and our days from 5 to 5, 5 a.m. to 5 a.m. And so you'd wake up in the morning. You're like, okay, three hours ago, we know this is what we posted for the oil rate production for the day or in Trinidad, the gas rate production. You could be like, okay, things are good. And if things weren't good, you'd be like, well, shit, what happened, right? Why is it down 5%, 10% for the day? So it, it allows you to start, to, instead of having to, you know, go and, and dig up all these things, look well by well, it gives you a summation, a report, and it just makes things a little bit easier. Um, anyway.